Welcome back to yet another discussion on some of the most important history topics that could find their way to your 2024 prelims examination. This video discusses two important themes related to the archaeological excavations. The first news is about the excavation related to the Indus Valley civilization and for the second, we move down south to Keeladi in Tamil Nadu. So first, let us look at headlines about the two themes and then let's delve into their significance from an examination point of view. So the first news article is about the Rakigari site. So first, let me read out the headlines for you. NCERT revisions to class 12 history text show Harappans indigenous to Haryana's Rakigari site. So they have said that Rakigari in Hisar is also the largest site from pre-Harappan period. The Archaeological Survey of India has carried multiple excavations at the Rakigari site in season gaps. More than nine excavations have taken place there. Okay. So during the excavations in 2022, the ASI found mounds 1, 3 and 7 and in total 13 trenches were excavated. Okay. This is the first news article. The second headlines is related to the excavations at Keeladi. Okay. So ASI to publish report on first two phases of Keeladi excavation in nine months. Center tells High Court. The petitioner said about 5,800 artifacts were unearthed in Keeladi during the first two phases of the excavation, adding that subsequently, the ASI said there were no significant findings in phase three. Okay, so these are the two important news articles from which we are going to make a study. Okay, so first up, let's take for discussion the Rakigari site. Okay, so first let me explain to you where the site is located. So as you see on the map, Rakigari site is located in the Hisar district of Haryana. Okay, this is Haryana. So it's located in the Hisar district of Haryana. Okay, and uh, this is a significant archaeological site which throws light on the ancient Indus Valley of the Harappan civilization. So the archaeologists have dated this site uh, back to 6500 BC. Okay, and this Rakigari site is known to be one of the oldest and the largest cities of the Bronze Age urban culture in the Indian subcontinent. Remember this, Rakigari is considered to be one of the oldest and the largest cities of the Bronze Age urban culture in the Indian subcontinent. And this site sands along the uh, Gagar River in the Gagar Hakra River Plain area. Okay, so the Gagar Hakra River Plain area is approximately 27 kilometers away from this site. Okay. So this particular site is counted among the five largest townships of the Harappan civilization. So what are the other four large townships? You know two already. Harappa, Mohanjadaro. Okay. And then you have Dolavira in Gujarat. Okay. So Harappa, Mohanjadaro are in Pakistan today. You have Dolavira in Gujarat. Three large town sites. Rakigari is the fourth one. And the fifth one is also in Pakistan. And the name of the site is Ganverivala. Okay. That's also in Pakistan, Ganveri, Wala. These are the five largest townships of the Harappan civilization. So what have excavations at Rakigari revealed? So if you see, excavations at Rakigari have revealed seven archaeological mounds. So each of these archaeological mounds showcase different stages of human occupation. So the primary focus have, has always uh, remained on the early and mature Harappan periods as evidence of these periods dominates the sites okay so from the seven um, archaeological mounds that have been found here one can basically conclude that there were different stages of human occupation okay and uh, there are more evidence to suggest the existence of early and mature harappan periods okay and the excavation results unearthed a well-planned township that showcased the urban planning prowess of the harappans so the presence of mud brick and burnt brick houses in Rakigari pointed towards their architectural skills. Moreover, if you see, uh, there was a discovery of a proper drainage system. And uh, this is another reason which showcased the advanced understanding of sanitation and civic planning of the uh, people who were part of this civilization. Another important find at Rakigari is the ceramic industry. Okay, so ceramic industry represented uh, was represented by redware and pottery. Okay, it was represented by redware pottery. Fine. So various vessels were excavated, including uh, dishon stands, vases, jars, bowls, beakers, 
uh, perforated jars, goblets, and handis, as you see that on the image on the screen. So all this indicate the diverse and sophisticated craftsmanship of the Harappans. And moreover, ritual practices of the Harappans are highlighted through a discovery of animal sacrificial pits lined with mud bricks. Okay, so these pits, along with the presence of triangular and circular fire altars on the mud flow, provide insights to us about the religious and ceremonial activities. Okay, uh, among the notable artifacts discovered at Rakigari is a cylindrical seal. So here is the cylindrical seal. Okay, one side of the seals uh, depict five Harappan characters. Okay, one side of the seal depicts five Harappan characters. While the other side showcases the symbol of an alligator. Okay, five Arapan characters are here. The other side showcases the symbol of an alligator. So this seal is basically regarded as an important piece of evidence for the existence of writing system. And it potentially also suggests that there was a presence of a unique identity or uh, authoritative power. People believe that this particular seal was the um, suggestion that there was a presence of a unique identity or authoritative power. And uh, along with all this, Rakigari also yielded a few extended burials. So these burials date to a very late stage and are believed to belong to the medieval period. So the presence of these burials offer glimpses into the later phases of the occupation at the site. It showcased the historical transitions and the continuity of human habitations over a period of time. Okay, so these are the important things about the Rakigari site. So you can look at this particular uh, Optima card for more information about the uh, Rakigari site. Okay, so uh, there is also an information about the person who excavated the site from ASI. Okay, it was uh, Amarendranath of ASI who was responsible for the excavation at this site. Okay, so for you to access these Optima cards, you can basically contact the number you see in the bottom of the screen. So with this done, next up I'm going to take up for discussion the Kiladi site. Okay, first uh, let me explain why it was in the news. Okay, so there was a practitioner who claimed that around 5,800 artifacts were found during the first two phases of the excavation at Kiladi site. Okay, however, Archaeological Survey of India stated that there was no significant findings during phase three of the excavation. Okay, so this uh, ASI is the one which is responsible for conducting this uh, archaeological research and excavations in India. You know that pretty well. So, um, they said that the results of the archaeological excavation can vary and not every phase uncovers groundbreaking discoveries. Okay, the fact is the first two uh, phases yielded 5,800 artifacts. The third phase of the excavation yielded nothing. So, the petitioner uh, took this matter to the court and the ASI replies that uh, archaeological excavation basically can be, be varying. Okay, not every time uh, a sizable amount of artifacts could be unearthed. Okay, so the lack of significant findings in phase three may be due to factors such as uh, complexity of the site or depth of the excavation. Okay, so this petitioner is basically seeking clarification and transparency from the ASI regarding the conclusions drawn from the Kaledi excavation. Okay, and this petitioner has also requested the formation of an expert committee to reassess the excavation process and its uh, results. Okay, so. Uh, in lieu of this petition, the ASI will be publishing a detailed report on the first two phases of the Kiladi excavation within the next nine months. Okay, so this report is going to be, uh, you know, is going to be done in a way which will provide further insights into the archaeological significance of the Kiladi site. Okay, so now I'll explain to you about the significance of the site. So where is this Kiladi located? This Kiladi is basically located. Uh, in Shivaganga district of South Tamil Nadu. Okay, it's a very small village. It's located in the Shivaganga district of South Tamil Nadu. So it is uh, located along the Vaigai River. That's why sometimes people refer to it as the Vaigai Valley Civilization, as it was located near the Vaigai River. And it's around 12 kilometers southeast of Madurai. So around 30 to 45 minutes, you can reach uh, Kiladi from the city of Madurai. Okay, so excavations conducted at Kiladi from 2015 onwards indicate the existence of an urban civilization in Tamil Nadu during the Sangam age. Okay, now let's look at the key findings from this particular excavation at Kiladi. So evidence has been found for pottery making, weaving, dyeing and glass bead industries at Kiladi. Okay, 
over 120 pot shirts, okay, over 120 pot shirts with Tamil Brahmi inscriptions have been uncovered, and this suggests a long survival of the script. In fact, gold ornaments, copper articles, semi-precious stones, shell bangles, ivory bangles, and ivory combs have been found, and all this reflects the artistic and prosperous lifestyle of the Kiladi people. Okay, and carnelian beads also have been found. So this showcases that trade was also something that was flourishing during that period. So what are the significance of these findings? So the findings at Kiladi established linkages with the Sangam age, a period in ancient Tamil Nadu between 3rd century BC and 3rd century C. Okay, recently ASI report has pushed the beginning of the Sangam age to 800 BC based on the archaeological discoveries at Kiladi. So commonly held notion till this point of time is that the uh, Sangam age was between 3rd century BC and 3rd century CE. But now, courtesy of these excavations, uh, the Sangam age has been pushed back by another 500 years. Okay, And uh, the Kiladi's artifacts and cultural aspects are compared to the Indus Valley civilization. But till this point of time, based on current excavations, there is still a thousand year gap between the two. Okay, And if you see, Iron Age material in South India bridges the gap and it provides residual links between Kiladi and the Indus Valley Civilization. Okay, so um, the excavation findings from this site reveal an industrious and advanced civilization. Okay, it provides evidence of urban life and settlements in Tamil Nadu during the early historic period. Okay, so that's the significance of the Kiladi site. Okay, so you have the Optima cards here, you can go through them as well for better clarity. Okay, so uh, we are done with the discussion. Uh, about the two important themes that we have taken up. So it's now time for us to basically look at the subsequent areas that you have to concentrate on, okay, uh, when you are going through this particular topic, okay. So most probably a lot of questions can be expected from the Indus Valley Civilization, okay. So when you talk about Indus Valley Civilization, you have to concentrate on its geography and archaeological findings. So if you see, Indus Valley Civilization is basically located in the northwestern regions of South Asia today. Okay, so it houses major cities like Harappa, Mohanjadaro. But the biggest site, Indus Valley site in India is Rakigari. So you can expect a question for sure about Rakigari. Okay, so another important thing about Indus Valley civilization is that uh, the layout of cities. We have well-planned streets in Indus Valley civilization. The cities are at, uh, the streets are at right angles to each other. The drainage system is on par with some of the best civilizations of the world. Okay, and there is a grid-like town planning. So... Indus Valley Civilization, you have to concentrate on these aspects, okay, concentrate on Rakigari site, town planning and the salient features of the civilization, okay, and then you have to concentrate on its society and culture, okay, the society, as you all know, was believed to be in a hierarchy, uh, hierarchical manner, okay, so there was public and private baths uh, indicating important uh, importance placed on cleanliness and hygiene, so you have to uh, know about the important structures like uh, the Great Bath in Mohanjadar. So artifacts such as pottery, statues, jewelry reflect their artistic skills and cultural traditions. Okay, that's another area you have to look up. And then their script and language. Okay, so till today the Indus Valley script remains undeciphered. Okay, the script is found on seals and other artifacts suggesting a system of writing and communication that was present there, but we we have yet to understand what they basically mean and then Indus Valley crafts is another thing that you have to keep in mind so pottery making metallurgy was uh, reigning supreme during that period so the bearded man statue was something dancing girl statue questions could be asked about that okay so pottery artifacts and all during the Indus Valley period with uh, with intricate designs and shapes so bronze and copper objects uh, were present in large numbers so all this showcases the craftsmanship of the people of Indus Valley region okay and then coming over to their religion Okay, so uh, it is widely believed that uh, they worship the natural forces. Okay, so one could also find terracotta figurines and we are yet to link the connection between those terracotta figurines and religion. Okay, so most probably uh, you have to concentrate on the gods uh, that were basically uh, uh, worshipped by the people and uh, it, most probably it was the natural forces that they worshipped. Okay, and then seals and images is another important area that you have to touch upon. Okay, the IVC is notable for its seals depicting various animals. One can find unicorns, bulls and elephants 
in those seals okay so these seals could have been used for administrative purposes trade and uh, they could also have been used for uh, used as identity markers okay and then talking about the economy so they had a uh, that was evidence of trade networks and urbanized settlements they had trade relations with the sumerian civilization as well okay so in that way you can talk about or you can basically um, have an idea about all those important sites which played an important role with regard to trade okay and then another area you can uh, basically discuss about agriculture domestication of animals these are the areas that you will have to look into while studying about the indus valley civilization and finally the most important thing is the decline of the harappan culture there are various reasons that are uh, attributed to the decline of the harappan culture ranging from environmental changes such as climate shifts or natural disasters okay so uh, a new theory has also have been proposed with regards to climatic changes so all this you have to basically look into for a broader understanding of anything that's asked about the indus valley civilization okay apart from that uh, apart from that you have to basically have an idea about uh, the various apart from that you also have to have an idea about the various sites in which archaeological excavations are happening at the moment okay the various sites in which archaeological excavations are happening at the moment that's something very important okay that's something very very important so you will have to do that fine uh, like keeladi there are several archaeological excavations going in other part of the country so keep track of all that okay so any questions can be asked from those excavations so now let's look at some of the model questions the first one which one of the following statement is not correct about the indus valley civilization evidence of some form of irrigation have been found embroidered garments were unknown in indus civilization many of the cities had covered drains mohenjodaro harappa and lothal had storehouses okay so what is the correct which is not the correct statement uh, the answer for this question is option b embroidered garments were unknown in indus civilization okay if you see a stone statue of an important man found in mohenjodaro shows him wearing an embroidered garment so this basically gives us uh, evidence about use of embroidered garments so evidence of some of the uh, uh, evidence of some form of irrigation have been found in dolavira okay uh, and uh, this shows that um, irrigation practices were there okay so if you see uh there were uh, wells to supply water one of the notable features that many of these cities were covered with drains and also remains of stone houses have been found in mohenjodaro harappa and lothal so a platform was built in towns where goods were uh, checked and stored okay so all these uh, four options are explained so the uh, correct answer for this question is embroidered garments were unknown in indus civilization that's the wrong statement because a bearded man is seen wearing an embroidered garment okay the next question consider the following statements rakigari uh, is the largest harappan site in the indian subcontinent the site of rakigari was excavated by rem vela which one of the statements is correct rakigari is the largest harappan site in the indian subcontinent okay that's fine that's the first uh, correct statement but the second one is basically wrong because the site was excavated by a team of archaeologists led by amarendra nath of the archaeological survey of india in the late 90s okay so second statement is absolutely wrong okay then the next question the largest site of the indus valley civilization discovered in india so far is of course rakigari okay so these kind of questions can be expected in your examination so as i told you earlier this is a map which showcases the uh, places where important excavations are happening okay this is a map which showcases the places where important excavations are happening so uh, you can basically have an idea of all these excavation sites as well because a questions can be expected from these sites okay so um, that's it from our discussion for the day uh, we run a current affairs session in the weekend so you can join that for up to date knowledge on current developments and for accessing the optima cards you can basically contact the number that's given on the bottom of those cards and uh, for more such videos like and subscribe to our channel thank you so much for patiently listening